Hi, everybody. It's great to see you all back here. Thank you so much for coming. Obviously, um, we've got uh, quite a program uh, prepared for you. I just want to uh, give you a couple of um, uh, updates about uh, things that are happening uh, at the school. Uh, as some of you may know, uh, we have uh, hired a replacement uh, for Cecily Banks, uh, who will be running the uh, Corporate Council uh, externship program. His name is David Gibbs. Some of you may have uh, met with him uh, already, a very experienced uh, business lawyer. Looking forward to having him uh, as part of the team. Uh, Brittany Raposa, for those of you who are uh, in your third year and um, will soon be preparing for the bar exam, uh, Brittany uh, has been hired to teach the ALR course and to do other uh, bar preparation work um, for you, and uh, we're delighted to, to, have, to have her on the team. Um, Katie Ahern, uh, who was here, and she's still here, um, but her status has changed. She was running the Business Startup Clinic as a visitor and is now uh, a permanent member of, uh, of the faculty. Um, in terms of, those, those are new faces, in terms of old faces, and <laughs> this is accurate. I, 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 think it's just, it, I think it's just accurate. Um, uh, I, mine would be one. Um, this will be the last year of teaching uh, at the law school, at least in a full-time capacity for uh, Professor Santoro, Professor Kogan, and Professor Ritchie. Um, we will be... Uh, um, there will be uh, some events during the course of the, um, of the year uh, to mark uh, those uh, departures and celebrate uh, those contributions. The first uh, will be the uh, Santoro Lecture, which is coming up uh, in October and will be followed by um, a dedication ceremony where Room 262 will be um, named in honor of Professor Santoro. So s stay tuned for more uh, details about that. We will be hiring uh, this year uh, two new uh, tenure-track faculty members. Um, to join the faculty as uh, we um, unfortunately uh, say goodbye to uh, Professors Richie Kogan and uh, Santoro. Um, I sent around uh, an events list uh, last week and just want to highlight two things. Uh, one would be Ruth Bader Ginsburg, of course. Um, and the other is um, that on September 13th, we will have our first Exploring Equality Roundtable, um, and that will focus uh, on some of the First Amendment and other issues uh, that were raised by the recent uh, events in Charlottesville um, that I emailed you about uh, just as school started. So uh, for those of you who are interested in a conversation about those issues uh, led by uh, some faculty members who have uh, deep expertise uh, in the area, please join us uh, on September 13th. So um, that's all I have to say, except congratulations to those of you who are beginning your third year or maybe your last semester. Uh, and for those of you who aren't, Soldier on. Soldier on. You'll be there soon. Thank you. Uh, do you have me? Yeah. Hi, guys. I don't have uh, much to say. I just wanted to let you know that if you have any, qu any questions about your uh, course of study, have you uh, fulfilled your graduation requirements, when, how are you going to do your writing requirement, uh, have you done all your, upper, your experiential learning requirements, please come by and talk to me. I'm happy to go over your schedule with you and figure out what's missing, especially you third years. You want to be on top of this. You don't want to have to 
take you know three uh, courses you don't really want to take in the spring just to get everything done. Uh, graduation audits are going to be done uh, shortly. They'll be out to you in early October, so you can see what we think you're missing. Uh, and if there's any question about that, we can figure it out. And also, you can see what you need to be doing in the spring. The uh, spring schedule will be a draft will be out shortly, and registration will take place in late October. Uh, the uh, academic success um, uh, staff will be available to do some give some counseling and information, especially for the, you second years, uh, thinking about what how to select your courses. But of course, I'm always uh, happy to to talk about that with you also. I also wanted to give you this sort of ominous word that your obligation, uh, your character and fitness question obligation in your application continues throughout uh, your law school career. So if anything has happened uh, since uh, your application a year and a half, two years ago, three years ago, concerning uh, criminal arrests or convictions, um, any other, other disciplinary matters, please come talk to me about it. Uh, especially for you third years, you were going to be in the process of getting you uh, certified to take a bar exam, and if any of that information is missing, it makes things much, much more complicated. Uh, I also just wanted to say we've got these handy-dandy new blue um, student handbooks. If you weren't able to get one, we will um, be printing more and um, putting in the library. The, at the back, Part of the handbook is the honor code. It would probably make sense to just review it briefly uh, at the beginning of this year, just to make sure you understand uh, what your obligations are as a member of this community. Okay, um, now on to Eliza Bornberg. Hi everybody and welcome back. I'm just here to remind you about the pro bono experiential learning requirement. Um, for third years, you have to have it done and your form submitted by April 20th. If you're a third year and you haven't figured out what you're going to do, you need to meet with Susie Harrington Stepin as soon as possible. Just a reminder, it's 50 hours, unpaid, no credit. There are a huge array of options. The Pro Bono Collaborative, Alternative Spring Break, Approved placements, which are on the back of this sheet, there about a, there's a pile of them right there if you want to take a look. Um, or you can get approval from our office to, to do your own placement. If you did a pla something over the summer that qualifies for the PBELR, get your forms in right away, don't wait. Um, and in terms of the New York pro bono requirement, the, if the hours that satisfy Roger Williams' pro bono requirement do not necessarily satisfy New York's requirement, so if you're thinking about taking the New York bar, you should come and talk to me about that. Um, let's see. Look for an email about the 100-hour pro bono recognition. At graduation, we recognize all students who have done more than 100 hours of pro bono service, and there's a certain way that you document that. Uh, let's see. Told you about that. Da, 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 da. I think that's it. <laughs> and uh, next is, but do pick up one of these. Andy Horwitz. <laughs> So welcome back, everybody. Um, my piece of this is to talk a little bit, just very little bit about all of our experiential education opportunities, particularly for those of you who are just starting your second year. Uh, this is all about planning, right? If you are considering a clinical externship, if you are considering one of our clinics, if you are considering the possibility of an externship that looks like a semester in practice, where you spend your entire semester in a clinical externship program, which can either be here or located somewhere else. Uh, if you are considering participating in the New York Pro Bono Scholars Program, a program that allows you to actually sit for the bar in New York in February of your third year, spend the remainder of that semester doing a full-time externship, and wind up actually licensed, assuming things go well, licensed to practice law, uh, in, a, in a very advanced stage. If you're thinking about any or all of those possibilities, 
The key is planning, and planning as far ahead as possible. So for those who are thinking about uh, in-house clinics and uh, clinical externships, uh, Lori Barron and the folks in the Feinstein Center are really the per people to begin that conversation with, and you want to do that as soon as possible. If you're interested in or thinking about the New York Pro Bono Scholars Program, I'm the first point of contact. You want to be scheduling, reaching out to me, and we'll schedule an appointment as soon as possible. If you are a student who is tracked toward the business uh, and transactional sort of end of things, where we have both a business startup clinic, one of our in-house clinics, and our corporate council externship, Dean Yelnowski mentioned uh, David Gibbs, who has joined us, and he's standing against the wall over there. Um, <laughs> We're very excited to have David aboard. I know for many of you, particularly in your third year, you grew accustomed to talking to Cecily Banks about how to plan out your curriculum and your experiential edu uh, educational opportunities. David is the man. You ought to be reaching out to David as soon as possible if you are tracked in that direction to begin to do some planning and some thought about uh, how to move forward. We have an information session scheduled that will fully describe all of the clinics and clinical externships, although it's all on the website. You should come if you're interested in or thinking about these experiences. That information session is scheduled for September 27th at noon. There will be an application period this fall for experiences this coming spring. We have another round of applications every spring. The spring application period encompasses the entirety of your third year. So if in the spring of this year you're thinking that in the spring of your third year you want to be engaged in some of our experiential education programs, the spring of your second year is the time to apply. You've heard many of us talking about the fact that we have a clinical guarantee here. In order to effectuate that guarantee, you must apply in the spring semester of your second year of law school. Okay? Uh, I'm happy to answer any and all questions, uh, so uh, you know where to find me. Email is usually the easiest way to sort of start figuring out how we can schedule a time to meet, but I'm very happy to answer questions that anybody has uh, at any time. Thanks. Uh, Reed. Reed Porter. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Marine Affairs Institute programs, uh, mostly about experiential education. But before I do that, um, for anybody that is interested in the joint degree program in Marine Affairs, um, and you haven't come and talked to anybody at, at Marine Affairs, myself or Professor Wyman, you should do that soon. Um, we're also available to help with curricular questions related to maritime um, and ocean and coastal law. So. Um, what I do over at Marine Affairs is I run our uh, Sea Grant Law Fellow Program, which you are um, eligible to apply for if you are uh, if you have completed your first level classes, which um, I think most of you have, and um, that's a program that's um, sort of like an in-house um, externship. So um, it's a little bit odd. You would work under my supervision on a project for an outside client, and that um, client can be from any of the ocean and coastal stakeholders. It could be a government agency, it could be a corporation, it could be a nonprofit. Um, you'd work on legal research projects. We don't do any advocacy, we don't do any litigation or lobbying type of work. So um, you get out of that um, a good uh, memorandum, uh, good writing experience, and independent research experience, um, and it can be on any topic related to ocean and, and coastal law. Um, so if you're interested in that, the application window for that is currently open right now. Um, you can do this for credit or for pay in most semesters. However, the ad drop period has ended. So your credit window is closed for this semester. Um, for students that are interested in applying for this semester, applications are due to me next Wednesday, a week from today. Um, so send uh, them to me, and if you have any questions about it, feel free to schedule an email, uh, schedule an appointment with me by email, and we can we can talk about your interest. Thanks. Thank 
Hello, welcome back. It's been nice seeing some of you stop by the office to let us know how your summer went, and please feel free to continue to stop by and tell us your stories. And when you come into the office, you'll see a new face. Uh, Gail McGinnis joined us this summer full time, so we're very happy to have her here. So she will definitely be there to help you schedule appointments with any questions you may have about simplicity or any other general questions you have. Uh, for the office, Gail can certainly help you with that. So the first thing I want to say is now that you've all come back from the summer, a lot of you have had summer experiences, it's really important that you update your resume now. Don't wait for a deadline. Uh, as you know, Tiffany and Jody are in the office as well with me. They're both part-time. What you might not know is Tiffany's actually expecting a baby, and she's due in October, another one. So, yay, Tiffany. <laughs> so, so don't wait. <laughs> so that's the moral of the story here. Uh, we do resume walk-ins uh, the first week of every month. Our next resume walk-in is on September 6th, but certainly come in and set up an appointment if you have any deadlines or any concerns about your uh, materials prior to that. Uh, the sooner you can get in, the better. As you know, there are clinic deadlines, there are ASB deadlines, there are a lot of other deadlines during the semester, so the sooner you can do it, the better. Uh, with respect to third year students, I'm going to address the third year class right now. Deadlines that you need to be concerned about right now are judicial clerkships. So whether it's here in Rhode Island or anywhere across the U.S., uh, there are a lot of deadlines early in your third year. Uh, so you should make sure that you work with a counselor on your materials and or with Professor Jane Rinsberg, who heads the clerkship committee. So make sure that you stay on top of those deadlines. We do send out emails regularly about those deadlines. So, uh, so make sure you pay attention to those because uh, those will happen quickly. If you are applying for a federal government position, there are a lot of early deadlines for the federal government as well. The Arizona Handbook, which is on simplicity, will give you an outline of what all of those deadlines are. But keep in mind that the federal resume is different than your regular one-page resume. Your federal resume can be as long as you want it to be, so you definitely want to make sure you work with a counselor so that you're presenting the best possible product to the federal government so they can know everything they can about you. Uh, other employers, I mean, it varies in terms of, you know, the, the, the government and the judges are the ones that hire early. Large law firms would hire early. early. So if you were at a big firm this summer, that would have probably happened by now. Most other employers will wait until after bar results. So this is an unfortunate reality uh, of waiting to get your, your bar exam results. So that doesn't mean you shouldn't be active during your third year in making connections, um, getting involved with the community. The more people that know who you are, the better when you're looking for a job post-grad. So make sure you work with one of us so you can start talking to people. And uh, so now on to second year law students. So if you are interested in working for a large law firm, those deadlines are now. We encourage you over the summer to get your applications out to those employers before you came back. If you haven't yet, there's still time, so please come in and meet with us to do that. There will be deadlines throughout the year. You will be applying to jobs now. You'll probably still be applying to jobs in April or maybe even May. Uh, there are employers that just post all the time, so just recognize this is a marathon, not a sprint for your second year summer. Um, so just, just keep that in mind. Make sure you come in and talk to us. Same thing with federal jobs. As it applies to the third years, they have early deadlines for second years as well. So take a look at the Arizona Handbook. Uh, one of the things we do a lot of, and a lot of you have taken advantage of it, is mock interviews. So feel free if you want to come in, if you have an interview coming up, to do a mock interview with us. Um, student groups, we are working very closely with a number of student groups to plan events. Um, we also have an event on September 13th for exploring your options in the public sector. So if you are looking for something in the public sector, feel free to come to that event. Um, it's filling up quickly, so we probably only have about 10 slots left, so make sure you RSVP quickly to that. Um, equal Justice Works, that registration is open right now, so if you are planning to go to D.C. to interview with employers from around the country for public interest jobs, make sure you register for that. Uh, work closely with me. Both Lori Barron and I go down to that event every year. Students get jobs through this event, so if it's something you're thinking about, it geographically, if you're flexible, it's a great event to go down to. Um, the last thing I want to mention is um, we have a 3L here, Jessica Trello in the back. She is our ABA representative. The ABA has free memberships for all law students. Uh, the information on how to register with the ABA is on, our, is on Simplicity, but Jessica will also have a table in the bistro starting on September 11th every Monday at 1230 to sign people up. It's a great resource. It's a great event. Uh, the ABA is actually looking for three interns right now. We're posting that on Simplicity right now. Uh, but it just is a great way to expand your network, to expand your resources, and to find out what's going on in the areas of law that you are interested in. So make sure you use that as a resource. And otherwise, feel free to come by and say hello. Thank you. Hello, welcome back. I'm here um, because I most importantly want to remind you that academic success is still here for you, even though you're second and third years. Um, and more importantly, to introduce you to 
both um, reintroduce you to Justin Kishba and to Brittany Raposo, who's our new director of bar support. So before I introduce Brittany, I'm going to have Justin come up and just give you a little bit of how he supports the second and third years here. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, just want to reintroduce myself, Justin Kishba. I'm the writing specialist. I'm here to help you at any stage in your writing process. The earlier, the better. In fact, you can come to me before you even start writing, and if we get on the same page early, it'll probably go a lot smoother. Of course, you can come to me with something that is already written or near to completion, and I am certainly willing to help you, but um, at that stage, I can, I'm limited in the amount of help I can give and probably in the amount of help you want, because if I start pulling strings, other things start falling apart. Um, if you want to make an appointment with me, just shoot me an email. It will be easiest if when you do so, you give me a day or two and a time or two or three on those days when you are available. I do my own scheduling and there's a lot of moving parts. So if you can let me know when you are available, it'll be a lot easier and I'll reply with a proposed meeting time. Since you are um, upper level students now, the things that have changed are I will prioritize appointments with 1Ls. So when their due dates come, I tend to get particularly busy. So if you want to meet with me, you should anticipate that as well and schedule with me well in advance. For those of you that are doing directed research or working on your writing requirement, I am certainly available to help you as well. But again, earlier the better. Um, unfortunately, I do not offer a dry cleaning service where you can drop off your paper and pick it up in three days and have it pressed and cleaned for you. <laughs> I much prefer and I find a lot, better, uh, a lot better results if we meet in person so I can start to explain to you the errors that I see or the issues that I continue to see in your writing and then we can learn how to fix them so you can do it yourself. One of those teach a woman to fish sort of things. Um, but welcome back. Good to see you. Please stop by. Um, and I look forward to helping you. Some of you have already met um, Professor Raposa because she teaches our applied legal reasoning class to our third year students. Um, I recommend that you get to know her because she's an incredible resource, not only for our third year students, but for all of you. Um, and she's also an incredibly nice person. Um, she's, she's got a JD from UMass Dartmouth Law where she graduated as valedictorian of her class. She served on the editorial board of the law review of her class. She was a secretary of the SBA, amongst other things, in law school. Since law school, she has um, been uh, CEO and founder of her own bar tutoring company, which has a very successful pass rate for students that she has tutored. When I spoke with students who she had tutored um, of varying ages, varying backgrounds, um, each and every one of them spoke of her talent both as a teacher and her dedication to them as individuals and how they learn best um, and they couldn't say enough good things about Professor Reposer, about Brittany and I'm so happy that she accepted our offer um, this past summer to come work with us. Um, in addition to her JD, um, Brittany has an LLM in Health Law and Policy. She practiced as a family law attorney um, before she coming here, and um, she uh, is a tremendous asset to our program, so I hope you get to know her. And I introduce Brittany to talk to you a little bit about the bar support that we provide. Hello, so I, I have like a hundred of you in class this week, so I'll keep it brief. Um, so I teach ALR, it's a year-long course that prepares you for the bar. In the first semester, we're doing criminal law, criminal procedure, evidence, and civil procedure. And in the second semester, we're doing torts, contracts, property, and constitutional law, focusing on MBE and MEE skills in the first semester and including the MPT portion of the exam in the second semester. 
In addition to that, I am creating a supplemental bar support program for students who are studying for the bar, and it'll be implemented this winter for the February bar takers. It'll meet twice a month. It's not mandatory, but it, I encourage you to go. And we'll be going over things like the MPT, the MBE, the MEE, and it's a supplemental resource for you. A lot of the bar programs are not interactive, so this will give students a chance to have some interaction in your bar study. Another cool portion of the program is that I have got volunteer attorneys from the community to grade bar exam essays while you're studying. And so that way you can get a feel for where you are and you can get an attorney to grade your essays while you're studying for the bar prior to taking it. And so there will be a supplemental bar support program already implemented this for the, this February bar takers. So I know who's taking the February bar in ALR. If you are not in ALR and taking the February bar, I encourage you to come meet with me. I'm going to get your name and find you anyway pretty soon. So um, I will tell you a little bit about that supplemental support and a little bit about um, what I can help you with while you're studying. Another thing I just wanted to mention is the MPRE. Most jurisdictions require a passing score in the MPRE prior to admission. Some, require, some mandate it later, but I, requ I recommend that everyone take the MPRE prior to applying for the bar. Uh, there is a MPRE exam coming up in November, and I will be holding an intensive MPRE review for the November exam and offering a mock exam and lecture after the, MP after the mock exam. And one big change I just want to note that affects almost everyone in this room is that Massachusetts is becoming a UBE jurisdiction beginning in July of 2018. You can no longer at that time take both the Massachusetts and Rhode Island bar at the same time. So if that's something that you are planning on doing, you can't. And so <laughs> you, might, you might want to come talk to me or talk to someone. I know it's really popular for students here. It's kind of like Rhode Island is like, really close to Massachusetts and so a lot of people swing both but and starting in 2018 in July you cannot do that so I encourage you to come talk to me as well if you want to talk about that otherwise if you want to come talk about anything my office is in 207 and I look forward to working with you all good afternoon everyone and hello Providence um, I'm here to give you a few updates about the library um, and talk to you about uh, Providence support and instructional programs. So the first update for those of you who are fans or were fans of the small computer classroom to the uh, right of the reference desk, immediately next to it, that computer classroom is no more. It has moved, however. So the computer classroom is now located where the microforms room was, which probably none of you know where that is. Basically, when you walk into the library, immediately to your right, you're going to see the computer classroom number two. Um, if you ever are in need of microforms, come talk to us, and we will help you out with those. Um, we have three new standing desks available in the library. They're actually tables that are fairly good height. Um, they have power strips attached to them and gel mats so that you can stand there. So if you want to try out switching from sitting all the time to also standing and continuing your work, you can do that. They are located right around the corner from study room 171. Um, also, uh, adding to the list of our curious and interesting items for circulation, which include the blankets and fans and things like that, we have also added uh, book stands. So I know a lot of you like to read using a book stand come and ask for them at the circulation desk. I believe we have three of them. Um, regarding Providence support, starting on Tuesday, September 5th, a librarian will be available by appointment most Tuesdays in the Providence office. Uh, visit our Ask a Librarian uh, link on our webpage to make an appointment with one of us. Um, regarding instructional programs, uh, those of you in legal practice three this semester, um, training will begin on September 5th, I believe, that's that week. Um, if you're enrolled in LP3 this semester, you will get an email from Nicole Dyshlevsky uh, letting you know whether you've been assigned to a section or whether you get to sign up. It depends on which class uh, throughout the semester. Some of them are by sign up, some of them are during your LP3 classes. Um, another change in the uh, instructional programs, or comes in the instructional programs, our Prepare for Practice program has been 
split into two pieces. The first piece is the research certification program, which includes topics that you have covered in LP1 and LP2, but also additional topics like um, regulatory research, keeping current with the law, et cetera. The second part of the Prepare for Practice program is the basic technology certification, which covers some basic and advanced tactics for using Microsoft Office programs, especially Word, PowerPoint, et cetera. Um, some things that can be very useful for those of you who have to write briefs, how to style your documents, things like that. Um, and also mobile technology, a couple of things. You do not have to have a mobile device to attend the mobile technology classes, so um, please check it out. The handout, there's uh, copies at the table in the front. It's a skinny little handout, has the requires, requirements for the programs, and there's also a link at the bottom of the page where there are descriptions of all of the classes that are being offered. Uh, for those of you who are 2Ls, you are already enrolled in the course. The research certification classes are available online through Bridges. The technology certification classes will be offered in both the fall and spring semester. Classes will be announced um, prior to them being offered in the library. Last couple things, um, please be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and or Pinterest. Um, this is where, Pinterest is where we do the fun book display. So if you wanted to see what's on display and you don't want to walk into the library, you can look at them there. Uh, for Facebook and Twitter, um, we post all of our announcements there, including things about when the hours are going to change for holidays. They don't change much, but they do change. Um, also things about our digital resources, other news about the library, et cetera. And finally, as always, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions about the library, please don't hesitate to contact me. My name, phone number, and email address appear on the front page of the Law Library website. Um, or talk to any one of my colleagues if I'm not around, and uh, we'll be happy to help you. Thank you for your time today. Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, my name's Kate Politano and I'm in the financial aid office. I just wanted to uh, mention three quick things to you. The first is health insurance. So if you purchased the school's health insurance and your refund took a big hit this fall semester um, and you're worried if you're gonna be able to buy food by the end of the semester, um, please come see us. Uh, we, <laughs> we don't want that to happen, so um, if you think you may need a budget increase and a little bit more loan money to help offset those health insurance costs, uh, please come see us. Or for any reason, if, if, um, if your budget's not working for you and we can take a look at um, your living expenses and, and how maybe financially can help you a little bit. Um, the second thing is um, bar, loan, bar loans and um, appeals for bar uh, application fees. So if you're a 3L, you're thinking about taking a private bar loan, we have information in our office for that, um, as well as you can use your federal loans um, to help pay for bar application fees. Uh, you can't use your federal loans to pay for, uh, well, you can't increase your budget to pay for bar prep study uh, courses, but you can use it for the application fees up for up to two states. Um, and the last thing is, um, scholarships and simplicity so um, just um, when you're on simplicity make sure you also look at the scholarship section uh, we will regularly update that so um, you may come across something that um, suits you and it may give you a little bit extra money to help you out um, and always any questions feel free to stop by our office thank you welcome back Welcome back, everyone. I'm Dr. Christopher Bailey. I am a psychologist and the interim director uh, at our counseling center here at Roger. So I just wanted to uh, introduce you to our services by starting with the front door. That's what it looks like. And it's uh, really simple. If you're interested in getting some emotional support, if you have some stress, some difficulties of a personal nature, we're the office for you. And it's as simple as walking through that door. Some basic things about us, uh, where we're located is the Center for Student Development Building. If you're not quite sure where that is, 
Um, it's where a lot of student life offices are, such as Res Life, um, Student Life itself, Conduct, Health Services, and we're right across from Cedar Hall, so it's a little bit of a walk from here, but not too far. Um, those are our hours, so Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5 p.m. Uh, we are open all year round, and um, some, some of you have availed yourself of our services over the summer. So we are uh, around all year. Uh, that's the staff, so we have uh, a lot of folks because we're, we're quite popular on campus, actually. Um, there's a, a number of us that are psychologists. Um, I'll talk about our psychiatrists in a little bit more detail later. Um, that's our phone number, so to make an appointment, you simply walk through that door or you give us a call. If you give us a call, we're going to say walk through that door. Um, but when you come in for the first time, uh, we have some paperwork for you to fill out and some computer forms for you to, to fill out as well. Uh, paperwork can take the average student about 10 to 15 minutes to complete. Um, I didn't put this on there, or it might be on another slide, but we are free. There's no cost. If you go off campus, there is a cost. Uh, let's see, talked about the paperwork. That's our website. That's what our waiting room looks like. We just redesigned it. Um, to, uh, to meet with us, you would have to have your first appointment in the counseling center itself. We actually do have an office over here in your building. We don't publicly disclose where that office is located because we don't want any of you or any student really to show up at that office for the first appointment. We really want you to go to the counseling center itself for your first appointment so you can fill out the forms we need you to fill out. After that time, if you'd like to meet us over here, we'll do that. Some of you actually prefer to meet in the counseling center itself, so we'll, we'll work with you either way, either location. Confidentiality, which I think uh, you can appreciate given what you're headed towards in your career. Um, so we are not allowed to share information about you, the fact that you are a client of ours, with anyone. That especially includes your family and especially includes folks in the law school. So we're not allowed to disclose that you are a client and certainly not the content of what you share with us to anyone. That is the law. Uh, there's very rare exceptions that go state by state but in a nutshell, it has to do with if we believe that you're at serious risk of, ser of harming someone in a serious way or killing someone else or yourself, we may have to bring other parties into that situation. Uh, a second situation would involve uh, issues related to abuse or neglect of minors or elders. And the third situation is astronomically unlikely to happen but we tell all students this anyways, and that would be if we're somehow ordered by a court of law. Uh, this came out from years ago from stuff that had to do with the Patriot Act, uh, but that is an extremely rare situation. We outline all of this with you in our informed consent form. So before you engage in a, in a therapeutic relationship with you, we lay that all out to you in fine print, and you can read it, and if you have uh, questions or concerns about it, you can speak to one of us about those. And of course, we will share information about you if you want us to. But we, we need more than your oral permission. We need you to write, write that down. And we have a special form for that. And some students want us to share information with certain people in certain situations. And we will honor that. I mentioned we're free. We're highly popular on campus. In fact, we set a record with the number of appointments in the last academic year. And that um, was a, a, a record-setting year after a previously record-setting year. So we're definitely on an upward trend in terms of the number of students that we see. Um, we're well known among students, and students are often the uh, ones who refer other students to us. I wrote down some examples of why students come in for you there, but there's a hundred other reasons that I didn't write down. 
The most popular reasons that students come in are as follows, and this goes back for at least 15 consecutive years. Number one issue that students come in for is anxiety or stress. Number two is depression. And number three is relationship issues. Those are the most common reasons. We do a number of groups on campus. Those are some examples last year. The anxiety group is quite popular. We do a creativity group, a happiness group, and you're all eligible for any of those groups. Uh, we do talk to other uh, folks on campus when we need to, uh, but never about you if you're one of our clients without your permission. There's a bunch of other things. Uh, in an emer emergency situation, the Counseling Center can be made available to folks at the university. Um, I mentioned this. Uh, this is a little bit detailed here. Uh, we do have a, a psychiatrist who's a member of our staff, but his availability is extremely limited. He comes in one day a week, and it's not for the whole day. So if you already have a psychiatric provider, um, perhaps you're still connected to your pediatrician or a PCP, whatever the case might be, if that person is providing you psychiatric medications, we recommend that you stick with that relationship and not begin a new one with our psychiatrist. Because I would add that he's not available in the summer months or over winter break. So he's very, very limited in his availability. If that is of interest with you, you do have to establish a relationship with one of our therapists before we would feel comfortable referring you to our in-house psychiatrist. Um, I did provide you with uh, six names of folks off campus that offer psychiatric services that do not require you to be in therapy. But if you ever wanted a referral to see someone off campus, uh, whether it be a therapist or a psychiatrist, we have lots of names and numbers of folks. And if you have a car, that also increases your options in terms of uh, the number of people you could theoretically see. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm last, so um, let's see. I don't know if I'm supposed to do this or they're going to do it there. Hold on. So first of all, I want to thank you all for making time in your schedule to come here, especially the third years who have experiential experiences. I know it's challenging to juggle these things, but we want to make sure that we're giving you these important refreshers all at once because these are questions that come up throughout the year. Can you please make sure that you've signed the role? Where is the role? Okay. All right. <laughs> I know there's a lot of names. And there is a role in Providence, so if you can make sure that that gets back to Margie and that it gets back to me. And we'll be posting additional information online. But um, just a couple reminders. My door is always open, um, so feel free to stop by any time or send me an email with any questions, big or small. I'm happy to direct you to where you need to go. Today, I just have to give, I want to give and, and need to give just a quick refresher for a sexual misconduct and gender-based misconduct policy. So this is one of the most serious, if not the most serious conduct um, code issue that I deal with in my capacity as Title IX coordinator um, for the School of Law. Uh, and I think it deserves an annual reminder because unfortunately we have cases that come up each year, either um, sexual based misconduct or domestic violence issues with students. So I think it's an important reminder and also it's relevant for a lot of students who are going to be going into criminal law. So bear with me. Um, so just what do we mean when I talk about sexual misconduct? It's really, really broad. And so it starts with low level harassment and it goes all the way up to um, rape or attended rape, attempted rape of students. So it could be sexual assault, um, non-consensual conduct, and that could be as simple as unwanted physical um, touching above or below the clothing. So obviously this is not allowed, not allowed at the law school, not allowed at the university. So it's expressly prohibited in both honor codes. This is the one area because of compliance um, regulations where um, law student conduct is governed by the university handbook and we use their conduct code um, policies to adjudicate um, honor code violations that pertain to sexual misconduct. 
So how do you avoid this? I think it bears um, mentioning that consent is what's critical. And consent means clear knowing and voluntary consent prior to and during sexual activity. Um, you guys cover this in class. Consent is sexual permission by word or action. Um, and where we get into trouble really is with drugs and alcohol. And so consent cannot be given under co conditions of obviously f threat, duress, um, coercion, or incapacitation. And so where we see issues, I would say at the undergrad side, some involved in those cases as well, there I would say 95%, if not more, involve alcohol and particularly drug use. So the university and the law school will be more involved this year, um, has many programs to kind of, of course, to address sexual misconduct, but also to prevent it. And a lot focuses on bystander intervention. It's on us as a national program started by, I miss him so much, President Obama. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but this was one of the movements. And there's been some change in this area of law in terms of what the obligations are from the university in terms of, all right, serious again. At, there have been some changes in terms of what Title IX will look like um, under the new administration, but I can assure you that uh, the university is maintaining its strong stance regarding consent and the enforcement of sexual assault protections on our campus. And so we really want any victims or anyone who's affected by sexual assault or sexual misconduct broadly to bring that to the university's attention. There are protections for both the victim as well as the accused, and we take this responsibility seriously. Um, so quickly, it's obviously very, one of the most important, uh, most serious violations of the university code of conduct. If you're found responsible um, for sexual assault, it results in a suspension for no less than one semester to all the way up to expulsion from RWU. We have had law students suspended from the university um, for being found responsible under, under this provision. The law school also has a permanent notation on your transcript. So these are adjudicated under the Student Conduct and Community Standards Office. And so while any conduct code violation is punitive, they really do have an educational philosophy. And the purpose is to educate, to educate restore, and to protect the community. Um, so if you are a victim of sexual misconduct, and that's very broad, and that includes even stalking, harassment of students. You're encouraged to speak to university staff and administration, as well as we will provide information to local resources, as well as to the local authorities as appropriate. Um, the handout that I have on this has information about who the deputy Title IX coordinators are on campus. So for the School of Law, I'm your person. If you don't want to speak to me or want to speak to someone else, Jennifer Stanley is a deputy Title IX coordinator for the university. But then there's a whole list of resources of people, men and women, um, with different certifications and qualifications around campus. And any of those people listed are certainly a resource for you, as are the judicial offices and so the honor, um, I don't want you to worry about who do I need to contact. Of course, the honor code, the honor board here, if there's any questions, you can speak to them and they can provide appropriate referrals, law enforcement, and then their confidential resources. And so when Christopher Bailey said that it's confidential, I assure you it is 100% confidential. He won't tell me who's a com who's who he speaks to, and he won't tell me who he doesn't speak to. So there's no like back door where I get information. Um, we take that really seriously. And so confidential resources means that for under Title IX, sexual assault misconduct, you can speak to these people and they will not disclose that information. So that's the Counseling Center, Reverend Nancy Sukup, who is the interfaith chaplain for the university. She's great. And then also we have a relationship with Day One, which is an off-campus um, referral. One thing that is important to know is that the confidential resources, those are the only people allowed on campus to keep information about sexual misconduct confidential. So if you speak to anyone else on this campus, and that's supposed to be faculty members, adjunct faculty members, staff members, secretaries, and you disclose this information, they are obligated to tell me, okay? And that's because, that doesn't mean that 
and I will contact you. And that doesn't mean that you're not in the driver's seat, but it means that I have an obligation as part of my employment, as part of my role here, to make sure that you understand what your options are and what resources are available. So I'll be following up with the faculty to make sure that they know that they should be sharing that information with me. But uh, I think the message is to, one, be careful always around alcohol and drugs. And as we get character and fitness updates, the, that's where students tend to get in trouble. Um, so remember consent, remember relationships with one another, but remember the resources are here and we want to help you. And with that, you guys are done. Thank you very much.